There are quite a few sights to see if you walk just northeast of the Red Rocket truck stop. One of the first things we come upon is a small raider encampment. This small camp has three raiders and one attack dog. <laughs> reward for defeating these raiders is one cooler, which in my game had some buff out, and a bed to rest up. Continuing east, we see a completely ruined house. All that remains is the brick chimney, and behind it, we find a broken safe, which has a 10mm pistol and a stash of caps. North of the chimney, we climb a large rocky hill, and at the very top, we see a lean-to built from logs. This is somebody's home, and it's got a great view overlooking the Sanctuary Lake. We see an ammo crate, a cooler, and a piece of jet. One may be tempted to turn this into a temporary player home, but this shack does have an owner. After we loot the ammo crate, the owner returns. <laughs> Traveling southeast down the hill, off in the distance, we see a crashed vertebird. Approaching from behind, we see a lot of debris that the vertebird dropped as it was crashing. A couple of crates, one wooden crate with some random junk inside, and inside the vertebird, we find the deceased pilot, still wearing his military uniform and helmet. Underneath the cockpit next to a wing is one ammo box, and directly west of the crash site is a suit of power armor. Leaning against the power armor, is presumably its former owner. I don't know why he's outside of the suit of power armor. Maybe he would have lived had he not gotten out. This suit is a leveled suit. Since I discovered this suit, much later in the game on this character, the pieces I found on the frame were X01 pieces. Ignoring known power armor frames is a great way to collect lots of X01 pieces if we round them all up later in the game. However, this suit does not have a fusion core inside, which is a problem if we come upon this earlier in the game, as we may not have found a fusion core yet. Heading east from the crashed vertebrate, we find a dry lake bed. We see a couple of mole rats, but as is always the case with mole rats, there are many more hiding somewhere. Our reward for clearing the mole rats and the ragstag that decided to attack for some reason is being able to loot a collection of bodies that have been dragged into the middle of this lake. A settler, a raider, and a trader, as well as a big duffel bag. Walking directly north of the dry lake bed, we find a collapsed shack. And this is a grisly scene. Inside the shack, we find a bathtub. And inside the bathtub, the body of a dead settler. There's a novice locked wooden crate next to her, as well as a cooler with some chems. And just outside is a big barrel with the body of a traitor stuffed inside. This, I believe, is clearly the work of a raider. However, the biggest point of interest is if we walk directly west of the dry lake bed. Northeast of Sanctuary, close to the northern border of the map, we find the robotics disposal ground. Despite the name of the place, we don't find very many robots. We see a lot of tires and a whole bunch of cars, and we find some pretty decent loot. Just before entering, if we look behind the northern stack of tires, we find a mini nuke. In my game, I couldn't select it. I had to jostle it a bit, knock into it, move it around before it finally dislodged and I was able to loot it. There's a little bunker building to the left, but we're gonna check this out in a minute. As we continue to explore the disposal site, we find some flamer fuel right next to a half-buried barrel, more cars and barrels, and behind a warning barricade is a sentry bot. But it has a unique name, Combat Sentry Prototype Mark IV. 
We'll check in on this guy in a minute. Right next to him is an end of dungeon steamer trunk with a fusion core inside. Well, this is great news. We can plug this right into that suit of power armor we found. If we climb up on top of the rusted pile of cars, we find a fat man lying on the trunk of a Corvega. This is amazing. This means we can get a fat man and a mini nuke practically as soon as we walk out of Vault 111. With the yard explored, we can go into the shack. Opening the door, we see it lit with a single light bulb that casts shadows from the middle of the room. We can loot a first aid kit on the wall. We see a weapons workbench in here and the body of one of the employees who must have worked here lying on the ground, his head resting on a red toolbox. There's a tiny table next to him on the bottom shelf we find a stim pack and on the top shelf a copy of hot rodder magazine this gives us the ability to paint the flame paint job on power armor this paint job will work on every suit of power armor if you want to see what it looks like take a look at my power armor museum video which you can watch here and right next to the magazine is a terminal robotics disposal east 09b U.S. Robotics Disposal, safely disposing of your robotic waste since 2053. There are three sections here. The first, delivery log. We see the log listed from latest to earliest. On the 15th of October, they were delivered one prototype sentry bot with unknown issues. This must be the Mark IV that we saw behind the barricade earlier. On the 13th of September, they were delivered 15 Protectrons, all with missing limbs. On July 22nd, they received four decommissioned sentry bots. On June 15th, eight Robo Brains with an IQ well below 80. Well, we know where these came from. These came right from the hidden factory beneath the Robco Sales and Service Center. And could the fact that they used prisoner brains in these robo brains be enough reason to explain the low IQs in these which were disposed? The average human IQ is between 90 and 110, making 80 really low. On the 8th of the same month, they received 14 iBots with the vision sensors missing. May 24th, 9 Protectrons again with missing limbs. March 14th, 27 defective Mr. Handies, which won't stop talking. I can see why that would be annoying. And on November of the previous year, they received a shipment of 12 Protectrons, also missing all limbs. What's with the Protectrons? Electrons missing limbs. Well, it seems like this disposal site is not that busy. They can't even average one shipment per month. And the next category, employee notes. These ones are ordered oldest to newest. On May 24th, logged by employee Dylan. Weird. More of those Protectrons with no arms or legs. How do you even miss that in production? Do they have robots building these robots or something? That's a scary thought. On June 10th, logged by employee Mike, robots making robots is, yikes, we just got these iBots in the other day that were actually missing their eyes. Isn't that ironic? Ha! Oh god. Anyway, yeah, missing something like that, they must have a lot of their own bots on staff or something. Well, we learned from the Pit DLC that there were many companies replacing manual labor with robots. On July 22nd, Mike wrote, They just dropped off some sentry bots. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with them. Why would they just throw them away like this? I'm thinking about taking one of these things home and setting it up to mow my lawn for me. What do you think? On September 13th, Dylan says more of these Protectrons missing everything. I heard from a couple of the other nearby sites that they keep getting them too. Someone made a big mistake. Weird that it's cheaper to dump them here than to send them back and attach arms to them. That is weird. Especially if they do have robots building robots, because that means they don't have to pay as much in labor costs, which means constructing the robots should be pretty cheap. On October 15th, Dylan writes, Some weird guys dressed in all black just dropped off a sentry bot of some kind. They wouldn't say who they were. The thing looks like it's fully functional. They even had it drive itself into the yard and shut down. I looked in the trunk they threw next to it, and it had a holotape in there. I'm thinking about seeing what's on it, but those guys in black have me pretty freaked out. Five days later on the 20th, Mike says, I was just joking about taking one of those sentry bots home. Don't look at that holotape. If those guys dumped it all here, they had a good reason. And you probably don't want to get mixed up in it. We've got an easy job here. Come in a couple times a week, walk the perimeter, and go home. 
don't let your curiosity screw that up. Well, now they've got me curious. What's on this holotape? Why did they try to throw away a perfectly good sentry bot? Inside this terminal, we see holotape, Combat Sentry Proto Mark IV holotape. We can choose play tape to see the contents. United States Air Force Remote Sentry Prototype Mark IV, commissioned by Redacted and built by Redacted. This prototype sentry must only be operated by official personnel of Redacted or the associated client. What, why do they have this redacted? It says United States Air Force at the very top. We can fill in the blanks here. Commissioned by the United States Air Force and built by, well, Robco. Robco builds all robots except for the Mr. Handy. What's the point of redacting this stuff? Now we have two options here. Choosing the bottom one, information, we read, this holotape should accompany the combat sentry prototype Mark IV. Redacted is not responsible for any property damage, personal injury, or loss of life sustained while operating this prototype. If you are not a member of Redacted or an associate of the prototype's owner, Redacted, you must destroy this holotape immediately and deny any existence of it or the accompanying prototype. We then see an option to activate the sentry bot. This operation will boot the combat sentry prototype Mark IV and all of its presently loaded systems. Warning, this combat sentry is a prototype. It is highly recommended that all tests are performed in a closed environment. Under Combat Proto Systems Initiative Code 3392F6, the current user is at fault for any training incidents that occur. Continue with boot up sequence. If we choose yes, we get a message saying boot up sequence confirmed. We can then eject the tape and head outside to see. Almost immediately after turning on, a swarm of six or so mole rats appear with one legendary broodmother. So we activated this guy and he appears to be pretty powerful, but how exactly does he work? Well, we can give him commands if we use the holotape in the terminal in the shack, or if we use it on our Pip-Boy. For some reason, I wasn't able to choose the deactivate command. I kept getting a message saying data corrupted, but all other commands worked for me. Standing close to the Synfrobot using the holotape in my Pip-Boy, I can choose engage defense protocol and then select one of four destinations, USAF Olivia, South Boston Checkpoint, Revere Satellite Array, or Fort Hagen. Well, let's do a test by choosing USAF Olivia first, which is nearby. Initiating defensive procedures. Checking mapping protocol for nearby military emplacements that require assistance. U.S. Air Force Satellite Station Olivia detected as requiring assistance. Engaging navigation routine. The sentry bot heads out of the disposal site and travels down the road towards Olivia. And almost immediately we begin to see some problems with this fellow. Every few seconds or so, he comes to a screeching halt. The sentry bot overheats, his fusion cores pop out, and steam gushes from every crack. He'll stop for a few seconds before moving on. This could get rather annoying. Though I don't think this is enough reason to explain why the men in black dropped the robot off at the disposal site. After all, every sentry bot suffers from the same issue. It's clearly a defect in the machine that had not been solved yet, but it's nothing unique to this particular unit. But the biggest problem is after we arrive... Destination reached. Controlling perimeter. He says that he's patrolling the perimeter, but instead he turns around and walks back. So he doesn't defend this location. He traveled down the road just outside of it, and when he didn't get attacked and he didn't see hostiles, he turned around 
and went back. Now there were hostels here, mole rats, raiders, raider dogs. In order for me to have gotten use from this guy, I would have had to have timed it just right so that the sentry bot arrived just as I was luring the enemies at Olivia out to the road. The frustrating thing is after he returns back, we can take a look at our Pip-Boy to try and send him there again, but the option is now gone. So from my testing, we can send the robot to defend a location once, and after it's been defended, he comes back here and we lose the option to send him back. But we do have three more locations to send him to, and we begin to see why this could be a useful robot to get to know earlier in the game. Now later in the game, he's just not that useful. The character I'm using to shoot this footage has high levels of the robotics expert perk. Hacking the robot instead of using the holotape is better because it's easier, you don't have to lug around a holotape. It produces better results, you get more commands to issue to it, and the sentry bot is more responsive, sticks around for longer, fights better if I hack him and turn him into a temporary companion. But for low level characters or characters who don't have the hacker perk, this is really the only option outside of Automatron and the Protectron override program we get at Watts Consumer Electronics, which I covered in this video, to get a robot to fight for you. I can see this being useful when trying to get to Diamond City at a low level. For example, we could choose Defend Fort Hagen, and this is going to send the robot right through Diamond City. It devastates all enemies as it passes by, and then we can stop off wherever we want, walk to Diamond City, or even use his help when on the way to find Kellogg. We do get attacked by that Yaogwai on our way to Fort Hagen after all. Despite his usefulness in theory, in practice, this sentry bot is sadly a complete waste of time. I wanted to try another location, so I chose the Revere Satellite Array. Okay, a bunch of super mutants high up on satellite dishes. Should make for an interesting battle, right? Well, following this guy, the first thing he did is go the wrong direction. After finding a dirt road, he took it north all the way up to the edge of the map. At the top, he spazzed out, released a bunch of steam, turned right around, and retraced his steps. Okay, well that was a huge waste of time. The sentry bot can't problem solve to save his life. He got stuck between a little zip car and a short barrier. He kept driving into it, turning around, until finally he disappears, appeared behind me, and promptly drove right back into the same spot where he spun around and drove back and tried over and over and over again to roll over this car. The only way I got him to proceed was to wait for him to teleport again and then blow up the zip. But he doesn't handle proximity mines well. I finally gave up as we reached the Tucker Memorial Bridge. Even though my character has light step and never sets off any mines, this sentry bot doesn't and drove right through them and set them all off. So not worth it in my personal opinion. The robotics perk just works a whole lot better. So my favorite option with this guy is to use the holotape to simply choose the initiate self-destruct option. Under combat proto systems initiative code 576309, this sequence must only be initiated under specific emergency conditions. Current user must reimburse redacted for the total cost of destroyed property, including any collateral damage sustained. Are you sure you want to continue? Clicking yes. And if we go loot the body, we can walk away with two fusion cores, making this a much more profitable option. But now I wonder, what was with the guys in the black suits? The employees at this disposal site couldn't see anything wrong with the robot. It was brought here by guys in black suits, it rolled into the yard on its own, and the holotape was filled with all of these warnings, most of which were redacted. Well, I think we can fill in most of the blanks from what we already know about Fallout lore. Robco built all robots except the Mr. Handy, so Robco was likely responsible 
for building not only this sentry bot, but all others. This, however, was common knowledge. It was hardly a classified secret. If you go to Nuka World, you find the Robco Battle Zone, where we find a bunch of Robco robots, including a sentry bot, fighting to the death in a big arena. One of the complaints we saw on the terminal in the Robco Battle Zone was that spectators walked away disappointed because all of the robots used in the battle were already so well known. The public knew that the sentry bot existed. The public could identify it by sight. The public knew that Robco made it. So why all this secrecy dropping off this defective one at this disposal site? Maybe the whole sentry bot wasn't what they were trying to keep secret, but what this particular sentry bot had been used for. Perhaps the owner was a drug lord or a celebrity and had used this sentry bot for nefarious things. My problem with this theory is that on the holotape itself, it says that it's a United States Air Force prototype and it has four destinations all of which are military locations. I think we're forced to assume that the owner of this robot was the military, the Air Force in particular. This scenario has a very Men in Black vibe. Makes me think these guys were members of the DIA. But for the life of me, if the sentry bot was so important, if the things it had seen were so horrible, if its technology so valuable, I can't understand why the DIA would dispose of it in a robotic disposal site, a place where they couldn't really control who had access to it or who took what from it. Now I suppose we could always say that this robot was stolen, that the people who dropped it off were pretending to be DIA agents, that they really didn't have any connection with the military. They stole this sentry bot, they retrieved from it the technology that they needed, perhaps because they were Chinese spies, and after getting what they needed, they wanted to dispose of the evidence, and so the best way in their minds was to pretend to be members of the DIA, to drop it off here at the disposal site, and to intimidate the private sector employees who worked here, to prevent them from fiddling with it, hoping that the military never found it. Perhaps these Chinese spies chose this disposal site specifically because it did not get much business. We saw from the logs that it got maybe one new batch of robots to dispose every other month or so. A company with this little business likely didn't bother to take records of important things like serial numbers and was less likely to record these things when filing taxes or reporting to the government, making this place ideal to dispose of the unit. And if the employees did happen to use the holotape to activate it and they were caught, they would be the ones who likely got charged with stealing it and the Chinese spies would get off scot-free. Perhaps the Chinese would do this because their own robotics technology was lagging behind. Maybe they wanted to download schematics from the sentry bot to create their own Chinese versions. Ultimately, this is all speculation and we don't really know. Who do you think the guys in the black suits really were? Or is this just a simple reference to the movie Men in Black? If not Robco, who do you think made this? If not the military, the Air Force in particular, who do you think owned this? And how do you explain its disposal in a place with such poor security? Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I'm publishing some shorter content this week because I'm gearing up for a brand new DLC series. Thanks for sticking with me, and if you have any requests for content in the future, go ahead and leave them in the comments below. I've got a new shirt in the shop, folks. Build mass with sass. That's right, you can sport your love for your favorite soft drink from Fallout New Vegas, Sunset Sarsaparilla. I've got the designs on t-shirts, hoodies, mugs, even stickers in a variety of sizes, styles, and colors. On the front, we have the Build Mass with Sass Muscle Guy, and on the back, good old Festus, laying down some silly old advisories. You can find a link to my shop in the description, or you can click here. If you like what I do and you want to support me in a more personal way, consider becoming one of my patrons on Patreon. But more than anything, I'm just so glad you're here watching this video with me today. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow morning, bright and early, with a brand new video.